If Rings of Power is supposed to usher in a new Tolkien era, why is this the first time we're even hearing of this show? Before the pilot episode has even dropped, people are swearing off of it. With less than a month left before release, fans seem to be unsure about whether or not they should put their full weight behind it. Here's why fans don't seem to be quite on board with the new Rings of Power series. First up, it seems like total newbies are at the helm of this project. Writers Patrick McKay and John D. Payne may have been writing together for 20 years, but that still doesn't mean we've heard of them, with only one partial credit to their names in the form of Star Trek Beyond, which was considered just run-of-the-mill. This duo seems to have bitten off more than they can chew in order to prove that they have the writing chops to handle this massive project. We'll be needing more than just run-of-the-mill to get this series off the ground. Especially with Peter Jackson washing his hands of the project, fans can't be too sure of this upcoming project. Next up, have you seen the number of zeros in that budget? Amazon seems to be sparing no expense in budgeting this show show, with the first season costing approximately $465 million. This is by far the most expensive television show set to air of all time. With only eight episodes this season, each episode had its own budget of $60 million. That's just $40 million shy of what it cost HBO to produce Game of Thrones. They ran a whole season on just $100 million. Although it's commendable for Amazon to hit the ground running and throw money into their new passion project, will they be able to put their money where their mouth is and give fans the experience they well and truly deserve. Amazon also plans on milking this series for all it's worth, and producing a minimum five-series mega empire. But if they can't get the first series off the ground, judging by fan hype or lack thereof, is there a point in putting all their eggs in one basket? More money doesn't necessarily mean better content. What's more, casting seems to be all over the place. Kudos to the creative team for recruiting a more diverse cast, but some fans still can't seem to shake the feeling that they're being robbed. Peter Jackson is found to be at the center of this conspiracy yet again. Fans will argue that he broke his back in an effort to cast the perfect elves for his movies. They were literally radiating outwards from the screen. In comparison, the new elves that have been cast in the series seem to be pretty dull and human-like, a sharp contrast to the Galadriel of yore. Fans are in a tizzy about the disinterest the casting directors have seemingly put towards hand-picking the best of the best for their leading cast. Up next, R.I.P. The Hobbit. Even though The Hobbit, which received its fair share of criticism looks better in comparison, the short and sweet book, by Tolkien standards, was turned into a lengthy three-movie saga peppered with exaggerated plots and out-of-the-world characters. The prequel movies sure took their own sweet time fleshing out a storyline that could have easily been covered in one single-length feature film. Now fans appear to be remembering it with fondness, claiming it kept the Tolkien legacy alive by sticking to the general theme of things. Next, let's get real as to why Rings of Power is really being made. Yeah, you guessed it right, it's to pull traffic away from streaming competitors like Netflix and Disney+. If you thought that Amazon was creating this series purely to show their devotion to Tolkien and his works, then you better think again. Amazon has spent a truckload of money getting the rights to this deal, and it has no intention of stopping now. Big Baddie Bezos already owns a major chunk of the world's labor force. What's stopping him from steamrolling his way onto our screens as well? It fills us with great sadness to learn that even this beautiful series, which spreads the message of love, laughter and togetherness could not escape the greed of big corporations. And last, but not least, solely blaming the show for its shortcomings isn't fair. Tolkien is treated like a god and his books are gospel, stray from them and suffer the consequences. This seems to have become the mantra of the Tolkienites as they face the upcoming season with relative disinterest. All the promotional materials for the new season have been treated with the utmost scrutiny and distrust, with fans raking the trailers through the coals, desperate to pick out some fault. Movies and TV shows shows based on book series are no longer regarded as just side quests to pass time. They are held up to an unreachable standard of what the fans believe the source material should be. They'll force everyone to see it their way or die trying. This is the new age of media, and everyone's a critic. However, they shouldn't be blamed outright. Mastermind Peter Jackson charmed the socks off everyone when he created Middle Earth from scratch, bringing a fresh wave of notoriety to an already massively popular series and boosting sales in all directions. What's more, a trailer, a teaser of a trailer, and a superfans video, it's hardly anything to go by when it comes to fairly assessing the full scale of what we're in for. Producers have made teasing the fan into a competitive sport by giving them shapeless snippets of content. Now, in other news. First up, in the red corner, we have the House of the Dragons facing off from the newcomer The Rings of Power. Fall 2022 is geared up to be any fantasy fanatic's ideal TV binging season, with both Rings of Power and House of Dragons slated to release within weeks 
weeks from one another, the anticipation in the air can be cut with a knife. Both of the new series precede massive fantasy franchises with a cult following, distinguished book series, and massively grossing screen adaptations. On the one hand, House of Dragons is tasked with winning back viewers after the controversial final season of Game of Thrones, and on the other, Rings of Power has some seriously giant Peter Jackson-shaped shoes to fill, now that we know that the director is nowhere to be seen in this project. Both seasons have their work seriously cut out for them. Up next, Slim Shady makes a comeback as Slim Sauron. With the trailer for the new Rings of Power making its rounds at SDCC, that's San Diego Comic-Con for the uninitiated last weekend, several fans were shocked to see a character who bore a striking resemblance to the famous rapper. Bright blonde hair shaved close to the scalp drew several callbacks to Eminem's unmistakable Slim Shady era. Twitter was flooded with fans dubbing this mysterious new character as Slim Sauron. Many are claiming that this was a sneak peek at Mini Sauron before he became the big bad of the series. It seemed as if, for once, nobody had anything bad to say about the upcoming series. Here's to hoping that the series gives us the shot of the OG rapper donning his evil armor and embracing the dark side completely. Next up, Mary Brandebuck seemed to be quite merry about the new Rings of Power. LOTR veteran and everyone's favorite hobbit, actor Dominic Monaghan, has nothing but praise for the upcoming series. Wishing the series well on its maiden journey, he says the creators are properly using the sheer size of Tolkien's world to its full extent by portraying it in this fashion. Nowadays, people are more accustomed to consuming their media in bite-sized chunks. As the actor so aptly puts it, no longer do we have the capacity or the bandwidth, kudos to Monaghan again, to slog through hours of extended director's cuts. Seems to us that the old squad has no problem passing the baton on to the new generation. And finally, there's a new fantasy series in town. Christopher Paolini's Inheritance Cycle is finally getting the recognition it deserves. And no, please, let's collectively swear to never speak of that monstrosity of a movie that dared to tarnish our screens way back in 2006. We shudder to even mention it by name, lest it curse us in any way. Sort of like how people think it's bad luck to say Macbeth in a theater. Aragon, the movie, was a box office flop, and not even big names like Rachel Weisz, who voiced the aptly named Blue Dragon Sephira, and Jeremy Irons could save the film from the rioting fans. This time around, Paolini himself will be integrated into the project, with him serving as co-writer and a potential co-show runner. We can only hope the Disney Plus, who've taken on this mammoth project, will be able to learn from past mistakes and breathe their famous Disney magic into the upcoming series. If not, they'll have some pretty riled up fans to answer to. That's a wrap for this video. What do you think? Are fans being a bit too harsh on the new series, or are their reactions justified? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.